Welcome to this first scratch tutorial. Well, I'll show you how to master the name challenge. We'll go from start to finish. First thing you're going to do is you're going to click on this create button. The create button is going to open a new scratch project. Right here is where there's where um, you can change the title of your scratch project. I'm going to call this name challenge. Now, my name challenge is going to involve the letters of my name and I don't need Scratch the Cat. In order to get rid of Scratch the Cat, I'm going to select Scratch the Cat and I'm going to delete Scratch by Scratch. Now I'm going to add new sprites for the letters of my name. The way I add a new sprite is I click on this Choose Sprite from Library and inside the Scratch Library there are all kinds of letters I can pick from. There's different styles of letters and really it's up to you which letter you pick. You can also, if you're really creative, import your own from the internet but I'm going to use the ones available here and I'm going to make or put in one sprite for each letter of my name. R H O D and E. Then I'm going to arrange the letters of my name. R, H, O, D, E. Now each of these letters is in my scratch project and each of these letters right now will do absolutely nothing when I run my scratch program. You'll notice I have the E block selected. I'm going to go and select the R block. There's two ways to do it. I can click on the R in the stage or I can click on R in the sprites. Now any code I drag into this code window will now be attached with the letter R. And you start code with the when green flag is clicked. So I'm going to start when the green flag is clicked I'm going to have my R do something forever. And I'm going to have my R spin forever. Let's see how that looks. Wow, is that impressive. Now, I can make it go slower a number of different ways. Here's a good way to get it go, to, to go slower. Um, I can also make it go faster. And you'll notice as soon as I change the code, instantly is enacted on the stage which is a really cool part of scratch but here's a bugaboo or a problem that um, you'll run into that is even considered extra credit by the project criteria whenever I um, uh, want to start over my letters are now in their new position instead of their initial starting position and I want their initial starting position to be, for example, for the R, I want it uh, to be at, at 90 degrees. So what you can do is you can right away, when the star is clicked, or when the green flag, sorry, is clicked, have it so that the default position is listed for the, sh um, the R. I'm going to do now the same thing for the H. Notice when I click on the H, where did all my code go? It's still there, it's just with the R. So the R still has the code for itself, but the H doesn't have any code for it yet. And I'm going to make the same code for the H. I'm going to have it pointing at 90 degrees, and I'm going to have its X, Y position be the position it's in right now. See, I'm dragging this motion block, go to X, Y, and I'm dragging this point in direction in the right direction. I'm going to do the same thing with the O. Now you'll notice when I click on the O, the code just seems to disappear again. My code is still attached to the H. My code is still attached to the R. Now I go to the O, which is kind of in the middle of the screen, which is kind of interesting. You can see it's really close to the origin, which would be 0, 0. And I'm going to, when, code, when the green flag is clicked, go to this position and be facing 90 degrees. Something um, many of you are probably noticing, can I just cut and paste code? And you absolutely can. The way you cut and paste code is you put it in this thing on the bottom called the backpack. There is no 
uh, power cut and paste or edit cut and paste uh, or, uh, so what you have to do is you have to make a copy duplicate it and you have to drag it into this backpack now when I go to the letter D there is no code there but I can drag it out of the backpack now there's a little problem with this um, you'll probably notice that this is now set to the position of the D of the O I'm sorry and I don't want it at the position of the O I want it at the position of the D and the D is located at 7612 so there's a couple of ways I can do that I can just go 7612 or if I want as I show you with the E you can drag this piece up and since this is just a tad different it might be quicker just to go like this you'll notice that in order for the uh, pieces to work there's a couple little details I want to show you right now in order to use a puzzle piece if a puzzle piece will logically work in the program there'll be a little white um, indicator that says yes this piece can go with that piece and they'll snap if the pieces won't go together um, for example this piece would not go he, it can't go right there but it can go here so then you can see that little white like halo appears um, in in that spot because that piece of code will work in that spot and you'll notice this rounded code this piece I, I, it won't go there it won't it won't fit there because it, it doesn't make it's not it won't work logically this has to be at the top of a set of instructions just like this one or this one so um, the code in Scratch prevents a lot of logical errors just by its design and by this halo effect. You'll also notice that if this, if this code right here would never run, it's disconnected from the when green flag is clicked. In order to run, it has to be connected to the series of instructions and one will, write at, one will run right after the other. Now when I press the green flag, all the code is in the right spot now I want to do a forever loop and I want something to happen I'm on the E right now so I'm gonna have the E go this way and I'm gonna go back to the R I'm going to use a forever loop and I'm gonna have it spin the other way notice how it snaps in when I run the code look at how it works this brings up another really interesting point about the code you'll notice that um, sometimes code these blocks of code have like stuff missing in the middle and it's just asking for puzzle pieces this is called a loop and this loop will run forever you can also have a loop that will run just 10 times you can also have conditionals which we'll get to later but for now the two loops will, um, you might want to use for your name are the forever loop and the um, repeat a, 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 a number of times loop so next thing I'm going to do is with the H I'm going to have the H fly around I think it would be interesting if the H moved and I'm going to have it move forever and I'm going to have it move 10 steps over each time the, the code is each time it, it, it's run so let's see what happens to this H there it moved 10 steps and then it reached the edge of the screen and stopped well, I don't like that I want it just to keep bouncing back and forth so there is a convenient um, code block design just for that that says if on edge bounce so I'm gonna put that piece in there and now you'll see that boom when this is on the edge it will bounce and it looks really kind of cool um, I can do um, something similar to the D and I'm gonna do a move for that too but this time I'm going to have it do some moving I'm going to have it do some rotating and then I'm also going to include that if on edge bounce and you're welcome to experiment with with things on your own name but you'll see that my D seem to have got oh it only did it 10 times I used the wrong block of code so I'm going to take this block out I'm going to delete you I'm going to add the forever block so it just keeps going and now forever the D is bouncing around the screen I can also do things uh, something completely different with the O I can go to this look screen which has some different options that you're welcome to to uh, play with too and there's all kinds of different graphic effects on the O and on the O what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to have um, it change its size. But first, I'm going to set its size to be this big. I'm going to go to Control and for um, I want it to do something 10 times, and I want it to do something um, 10 other times. And what I'm going to have it do is I'm going to have it get bigger 10 times and then get smaller 10 size. So I'm going to increase the size. Notice how I'm clicking and dragging cold blocks into the center of the puzzle pieces. So it's going to get bigger, and then I want it to get smaller. So um, let's try this again. Ooh, wouldn't it be cool if it just kept going like it was a beating heart? So now I'm going to put in a forever loop. I'm going to say forever do this. So now notice how the repeat loops are inside the forever loop. They're like nested one inside of another. So now forever the O is going to get bigger and smaller. Kind of looks like a beating heart. There's all kinds of other cool things I would encourage you to explore. Um, inside of that where you can do all kinds of things like you can even change color. And notice how the D is now changing color. It looks like a funky um, 70s um, color, um, color effect. It kind of is doing all kinds of neat things there. All kinds of things you can do, but just make sure that for everything you alter, you put in a way that when you come back to the beginning, you can go back to the default and that does take it back to its um, default um, this clear graphics effects takes that's back to its default good luck with your coding and changing your names there's lots of really cool things you can do in this name project